Why did I do this? Because note that your social security contribution, social security fund of the 5% that the employee pays is on the basic salary. That's the first year. The second year, the employer's payment of the 13%, it is also going to be on the basic salary. Sometimes there is a third tier, which is the provident contribution or private contribution, and that would also be on the uh, basic salary, sometimes 7.5. So that would also be on the basic salary. So if you mix up with the basic salary, you are in trouble. Hi there. So we want to continue with our discussion on the uh, principle of taxation and look at, uh, continue with our subject or topic on the income tax liabilities. Now, so far we've discussed a couple of issues about income tax liability. We look at the sources of chargeable income for tax. We look at the three sources, business, and then employment and investment. We look at the difference between end and on end. We look at derived in, arise, or brought into. We look at those various terminologies. Then we came to uh, the various issues about determination of chargeable income from employment by an individual and then from there we discuss the various things that you must understand about the release you saw all the things we did under the release and then we dealt with some allowances that the employees can also receive in in the case of where there is uh, that kind of thing that we need to look out for and do. And then we came to the issue in relation to uh, the various calculations that we're going to be doing in relation to bonuses and overtime and then the standard rule that surrounds the issue about bonuses. So we want to build it up and look at how we can compute the chargeable income of an individual. So I'm going to go through a full pro forma with you, okay? A full pro forma with you in relation to what may be constituted or what may be uh, in when we are computing the tenable income of an individual. And this is very, very important. About, among everything that we've discussed so far, we have put in all of the things we've discussed so far into a one pro forma. So the pro forma I'm about to give you here is the pro forma that you must make sure you stick in your head. You must make sure you understand it. You must make sure you know why we are adding one, we are subtracting one, why something is at the point and something is not at the point. You must understand this so that you will be able to deal with it in the exam hall because that is what will assist you to be able to solve a question. Now, before I go through the pro forma, one thing I want you to understand quickly is this illustration. So, always the individual is going to have a salary scale. So, when there is a salary scale, what is the principle surrounding it? So, this is the principle. So, let's say that Ajua was employed on 1st October. 2015 on a salary scale of 60,000 Ghana cities, okay, times 5,000 minus 80,000. The requirements of this simple illustration we are starting with is to calculate the basic salary. So determine the basic salary of Ajoa for 2018 year of assessment. 2018 year of assessment. So how do you handle issues like this? Remember what I said. This is the starting point. If you mix your basic salary, you are likely to miss a lot of things in your working. So make sure you follow me right here. Now the concept of our salary scale simply is that in the first year, a job will be receiving 60000 In the second year, her salary will be increased by 5000 In the third year, her salary will be increased again by 5000 
So we'll be adding 5,000 until we get 80,000 Ghana cities. And from there, he will be receiving 80,000 Ghana cities throughout. Let me take that again. The concept of the salary scale is that when salary scale is given to us like this, in the first year of the employment, the employer receives that 60,000. But every year, the salary will be increasing by the times figure that is brought here. And this time, it's 5,000 Ghana cities. So every year, we'll be adding 5,000 to the salary will be increased by 5,000 until we hit 80,000 Ghana cities. After that, he will be receiving 80,000 Ghana cities throughout. So that is how the concept of the salary scale works. So let's see how we will determine this issue. Remember, the examiner said we should do 2018 year of assessment. But like you can see, she is employed on 1st October and we are, we are supposed to do for 2018. So how do we jumble to through and work, do the various workings? So this is how we go about it. So from 1st November, October, 2015, from one year from now will be what? 30th September 2016. So that will be the first day. Then on 1st November 2016 to 30th September 2017. Okay? 2017. Then from 1st November, October 2017 to 30th September 2018. Then from 1st November, why am I saying November? From 1st October 2018 to 30th September 2019. So follow the concept that we are establishing right here. This is the annual, and the salary still given to us is always on what? The annual basis. So in the first year of his, her operation, she's going to be receiving 60,000 Ghana cities. Okay? In the second year, her salary will be increased by 5,000. So in the second year, she will receive 65,000 Ghana cities. In the third year, her salary will be again be increased by 5,000. And that is going to be um, 70,000 Ghana cities. Fourth year, the salary will be increased by 5,000, and that's going to be 75,000 Ghana cities. I hope you are getting the picture. So every year, the salary will be increased by what? $5,000. So assuming we are doing first October 2019 to 30th uh, September 2020, she will be receiving 80,000 Ghana cities. However, from uh, 1st October 2020 to 30th October, uh, September 2021, the salary will not increase again because the benchmark is what? 80,000. So in 2021, she will still be receiving what? 80,000 Ghana cents. I hope you are getting the concept. So the idea is that we'll be adding the 5,000 to the standard or the starting salary until we get the minus whatever Ghana cities is there. Once we have that from there, she'll be so from 2022, she will still be receiving the same basic salary if she is still on this salary scale. Now, what did the examiner said we should do? The examiner said we should calculate the basic salary for the 2018 year of assessment. Basic salary for 2018 year of assessment. So how do we deal with that? How do we deal with calculating the basic salary for 2018 year of assessment? How do we go about it? Okay, let's see. If you look at the time she was employed, you realize that 2018 should be, so 2018 year of assessment, now, you write it in full in the exam hall, okay? You write it in full. Y O A year of assessment should always be written in full. So 2018, you realize that Pat is in this period 
And another part is also in this period. I don't know if you can see that. Because there is some element of 2018 here, and there is some element of what? 2018 here. Because at the end of the day, every year of assessment has to be what? 12 months. 12 months. So how do we go about it? How do we go about it? So look at it. If we are looking for 2018, remember this is 1st October 2017 to 30th September 2018. It means in the year 2018, we have nine months here. Can you get that? We have nine months here because it is 30th up to 30th October, uh, September 2018. So there are nine months here. It means for uh, November 2018, sorry, October 2018, November 2018, and December 2018, the three months is going to be what? Here. So it means if we are looking for the basic salary of Ajoa, if we are looking for the basic salary of Ajoa, it is going to be nine times, sorry, nine over 12 times the 2000 and uh, the third year salary scale, 70,000, and then 3 over 12 by the fourth year, 75,000. Are you getting the picture very well? If you don't understand this, you're going to be in trouble in the exam hall. And a lot of things are going to be wrong for you. So, for the 2018, there is nine months there. The rest of the three months, was pushed in the next salary scheme because of the time she was employed. And so you have to be careful about this. So 9 over 12 times 70,000, what do we have? That's going to be 52,500. You can punch that to confirm. And then 3 over 12 times 75,000, 18,750. So we add it up, and that is going to give us the basic salary of Ajoa, and that is going to be 71,250 Ghana So for the 2018 year of assessment, basic salary of Ajoa is going to be 71,250. This is how you deal with the concept about the salary scale. So always, so assuming it was giving us 10,000 times 2,500 is 17,500, it means the first year the person will receive 10,000. The second year the person will receive 10,000 plus 2,500. And so that will be uh, 12,500. The third year, the person will receive 15,000. The fourth year, the person will receive 17,500. And after that, the person will be receiving 17,500 throughout. That is how we determine the salary scale about that. Now, why did I do this? Because note that your social security contribution, social security fund, of the 5% that the employee pays, is on the basic salary. That's the first year. The second year, the employer's payment of the 13%, it is also going to be on the basic salary. Sometimes there is a third year, which is a provident contribution or private contribution, and that would also be on the uh, basic salary, sometimes 7.5. So that could also be on the basic salary. So if you mix up with the basic salary, you are in trouble. And why is the basic salary also important? So apart from these three calculations, the basic salary, we are going to be adding the allowances, the cash allowances, okay? The cash allowances. So we add the cash allowances to it, and that gives us the total cash emolument. Once we have the total cash emolument, that is what we will be using to calculate the non-cash allowances, like employment and like accommodations, like vehicle, like any other allowances in kind. That is what we're going to be using there. Issue about bonus. Remember, it is based on the basic salary. So this is the starting point. And if you screw it up here, you will get Zorbo. 
It means nothing is going to be working well for you. That is why it is very important for you to understand this concept very well. And even though I want to go through the pro forma with you, I needed to cut this off straight up so you get a concept about how these things will be done. So I'll see you in the next video as we now look at the pro forma and see how we can answer the question.